Hello there, this is Joe DuPont talking to you from Tawanda, PA, right off of um, Tawanda Creek near the airport. And I want to talk to you about pneumatic cars. Most recently, there's been a lot of um, activity in pneumatic cars uh, because they don't have the problem of heavy batteries, and they also don't have the problem of the storage of these batteries. The batteries are basically um, short-lived because they, um, if they're deep cycled, it, it ruins them. So this is an area where uh, on a uh, air compression, we're talking uh, almost limitless cycles, and you, c you can at one time actually charge these things real quick. My thought is to use electrolysis of water to create up to 10,000 PSI. Here's a little automated, uh, animated uh, thing I did. Uh, you'll see this wheel turning here. Um, Basically, you have two tanks. The positive will produce oxygen. The negative will produce hydrogen. The hydrogen will be produced at twice the amount. These little squares are check valves to stop the hydrogen and oxygen from mixing because if that happens, uh, you're talking a potential major catastrophic event that uh, would probably mimic Hiroshima. But anyhow, the uh, gases are produced. They um, come down and they go through a heat exchanger, and then they go through the turbine, two separate turbines to keep them separate, hydrogen in one, oxygen going through the other. Now, this is like 10,000 PSI um, pressure when it starts. Then it comes out and goes to this burner, which heats the heat exchanger and preheats the gas. Now, this gas also, uh, while it's separate, bubbles up through some water chambers, and what happens, that heat is transferred to the water, so it modulates the water temperature to some degree so the uh, the gases are not too hot for the turbines um, if um, room temperature is about 460 degrees Fahrenheit absolute if you double that to 920 you're effectively doubling the volume of those tanks which is quite an amazing feat there's no sense wasting the hydrogen and the oxygen uh, as it's as it's expelled uh, they are thinking about using afterburners on um, various types of uh, pneumatic cars, and windmills can produce, you know, the um, the electrolysis. and the, And the electrolysis is not the most efficient way to uh, do things. But then again, if you take the heat of electrolysis and use it to preheat your water or store it for heating your house at night. Um, all that heat of inefficiency of electrolysis may not be really all that bad if you can if you're not just letting it you know go someplace. Um, like I said, this is a, to me a, a very interesting approach to um, a pneumatic car. I was thinking of doing the same thing with propane, where you use the propane to preheat the propane to run through your turbine. Um, Obviously, in an electric car, you still have to have heat for your defrosters and heating of the car. This would have that. You could use thermal couples to work off that heat and um, make um, electricity for your radio, maybe some lights. You could use braking to um, generate um, a little electricity for a battery for your lights. Like I said, this is a very possibly dangerous uh, situation, but the simplicity of no pumps because uh, high-pressure pumps are very, very expensive very expensive. You could be talking up to $20,000 to make one of these things. Here's um, my cat Ducky who's been missing for a while and I don't think he's coming back but he was a wonderful cat so we love you Ducky. Um, like I said this is a very interesting um, project for me. I'd like to get some feedback from someone as to the uh, how this thing might play out. Um, you know, it's one of those pie in the skies, but that's the beautiful thing about the Internet where we actually have the ability to communicate with people. So all of you guys take care, and guys and gals take care. Be good. Uh, God bless our troops, and 